Kick us off, Jeremy. Welcome. Episode one. Welcome to episode one of Building Wealth Strategies. I'm your co-host, Jeremy Constantino. I'm your uh, second co-host, uh, Tony Preston. So let's focus on, on Jeremy. Jeremy's big why. Jeremy's so big why. just like to introduce Jeremy Constantino. Um, not only does he serve as our chief financial officer for J. Par Vantage here in uh, sunny Arizona, but he's also a co-owner of several J. Par franchises throughout the United States. Um, and uh, he's been an investor for the last 17 years, and he's invested well over $750 million in projects. So excited to have and start this discussion on, on wealth building strategies and Love to learn a little bit more about you in this process, and we'll go through some uh, discovery. We have some tissue over here for those, those that get a little sensitive. And uh, but yeah, Jeremy, what got you into real estate? Yeah, that's that's a, a million dollar question, isn't it? It is. But that's what we're about, you know, helping build build wealth to you know to our clients. And um, so yeah, so my journey in real estate uh, really started with. Uh, really why I was attracted to real estate in the first place. And um, I was attracted to the physical structures, the aesthetic beauty of uh, architecture. And even in junior high and in high school, uh, I was contemplating being an architect. Um, but when I looked at what uh, out of college salaries are for architect, it was, um, it wasn't that high. So I, I chose engineering. I actually, I graduated from uh, University of Oklahoma uh, with chemical engineering degree. Um, but what really attracted me to real estate on the subject subjective level was the architectural beauty. So fast forward to my real estate investing. Um, uh, my niche has been luxury, uh, luxury renovations of uh, single family homes, uh, specifically craftsman style homes, ranch style homes. Um, and just a couple of months ago, we purchased our first, uh, Tudor home, hundred year old, uh, Tudor home. And, um, uh, I, I guess my, my niche or guess what I'm really good at is seeing those old homes and, um, what they can be, uh, accomplished through renovations and bringing up to modern standards and modern amenities, but while keeping the same historical architectural feel for the craftsmen's and the ranch. Um, so, uh, my wife and I have done a fantastic job, um, doing those type of renovations. Um, but going back to why um, real estate investing as opposed to um, another type of investing and really what, what got me started in that was um, uh, just like probably every other real estate investor out there gets their start and gets their aha moments from uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you've probably read that book too. I don't know how to read, but, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I look at the pictures. <laughs> I look at graphs and pictures. Yeah, in Rich Dad Poor Dad, there wasn't that many pictures, um, so I didn't read that book. <laughs> but thank goodness to uh, my dad um, is how I read that book, and it was in, in 1995. So when Robert Kiyosaki published that book it was 1995, and um, I was in high school. Uh, I think it was freshman in high school, and my dad was still driving me to uh, to school to drop me off at school every morning, and that's how I read Rich Dad Poor Dad was he pop he bought the uh, this the cassette tape player the cassette tape uh, put it in the in the, in the car cassette tape player and we would listen to Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad on the way to school that's so awesome. I'm sure we ha will have people listening to this podcast that don't even know what a cassette tape player is but have you seen one of those so i have um so funny story is we were probably on the same journey at the same time Whoa. so probably back in 1995 when yeah. um as in real estate one of my really good friends we he bought the tape he read the books bought the tape and we would when we carpooled together he'd be playing those that's so crazy man that's some amazing the whole rich dad poor dad that was my exposure to it wow so yeah, uh, reading that book, um, the first thing that it do, did for me was realizing the importance of cash flow and um, getting out of the rat race, so to speak. So yeah, you, you, you have a job and an income, um, but you're paying expenses. But the, the ideal is, is that you have real estate or you have investment assets that are bringing in positive cash flow to cover your um, expenses. Um, 
so that that was the first concept that I grasped and you know praise God you know you know I was in my young 30s when I've achieved that positive cash flow where I was able to step away from my nine to five job in corporate America. Um, um, so it is a reality in our life um, that having that positive cash flow and it, it's a huge uh, freeing um, factor uh, for raising a family and living. Um, so what the second thing that stood out for me for rich dad, poor dad, and um, immediately when I when I started hearing about the different types of investing that's out there, um, I was immediately attracted to real estate. Um, for probably as I, as I think over the years, what what it is really about real estate over the stock market mm -hmm. is that real estate is determined by local markets. Um, and it's something that I can grasp, I can it's um, tangible. It's tangible. They're, they're real, it's a real asset in a real location with land and, and um, a structure on it that is determined by the local job economy, the local population growth or decline, uh, whereas the stock market is macro. And what happens is in the stock market, you'll have one or two events overseas or with some other market uh, event that triggers this mass emotion that ca that triggers this price increase, price dis decrease that has nothing to do with the company itself. So I, so I still have, I still buy, um, buy stocks and I have investments in, and I, and I choose different, um, companies to invest in, you know, Amazon, Apple. Um, and I, and I, the, the way I look at it is I look at a, a company's balance sheet and their, uh, um, P and L statement and see, are they uh, a profitable company? So as an investor, I want to have ownership in that company and I expect to have some sort of return for their profitability. So you have all these companies that are crushing it, making billions and billions of dollars in net income year over year. And it's just frustrating to see my stock portfolio go down in value when they're, they're just cranking up, they're printing money basically. And it's, it's a function of, you have some puppet masters, the, the media says, fear this, fear mongering, and mm -hmm. you have the masses, you know, pull back and push in. And so it's going up and down. Um, it's impacting my investments where, and it's not even connected to the, the actual um, performance of the company that I'm buying. It's, it's so frustrating. I'm sure so many people feel that same pain too. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Um, so going back to the local markets, um, the risk is so reduced when you know the job growth, the local market conditions, you're able to confidently predict job growth, uh, the real estate market for the next five, 10 years, just based on the economy. Um, in, in some examples, um, of how inversely that could happen is, so let's look at Detroit, Michigan, mm -hmm. um, an economy that was based on one job sector, um, one industry, the automobile industry. So yeah. once the automobile industry starts moving businesses away from Detroit, the real estate market collapses. Um, so that's why I like investing into uh, markets that have a diversified um, job sector and um, uh, multiple different employers in the, in the, in the, in the market um, so that there's a stable real estate market and there's not fluctuations in the, in the real estate demand. Um, I, I invested into um, one of my, first places where I bought real estate was actually in Midland, Texas. And Midland, Texas, unfortunately, there's only one industry there, and that's the oil and gas industry. So mm -hmm. the price of oil goes up, you have more uh, businesses coming in that drives up demand, the price goes up of real estate homes, same thing, the price goes down in oil, the companies move out, there's less drilling, less, less uh, acquisitions as far as um, oil and gas goes. Um, uh, well, and it creates opportunity though too yeah, as well, absolutely. right? With yep. following those cycles, yes, because it's going to run in a cycle. That's a good point too. Even even in the fluctuations of real estate market, um, there's still opportunities to invest uh, significantly lower risk than, than the stock market. So that was my first aha uh, intellectually of why real estate over the stock market. Um, it, it's stable. Um, it's the certainty. Um, very low risk compared to stock market. In addition to <laughs> the cherry on top is called leverage. So mm -hmm. I, we don't have time to talk about leverage, but once you throw leverage in the mix to real estate, you're talking probably, you know, you could have returned on investments in real estate 
you know, two, three, four times the ROIs that you would receive in the stock market, just because now we're talking about leverage. Um, so I think leverage is, uh, I mean, that's an important factor because um, I think sometimes certain investors make an, a mistake at um, the success of an investment yeah. and they're not looking at their cash on cash returns, right? That's where leverage really comes in is what is your cash out of your pocket versus using other people's money, right? So the true way to really build wealth is through that point of leverage. I mean, whether, I don't care what you're doing. If you're selling, if you're investing, whatever the case might be, leverage is that key component of how you're going to grow. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a important, uh, saying it's an important um, aspect to grasp is a complete understatement. Yeah. Um, it's the it is the factor in uh, growing wealth, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's awesome. So, what's next for Jeremy? Yeah, good question. So, um, so yeah, these last three years, um, we've gr- we've scaled significantly in our in our brokerages in uh, in North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, and and here in Arizona. And so we're at a tremendous um, position to bring investment opportunities. Um, to our family and friends and say, hey, we have these opportunities that you can invest passively into and get out of the stock market. Mm-hmm. Put, your, put your investment. You've worked hard your, your many years uh, for your company that you've been building your 401k and your, your IRAs. You've, you've created that savings account, but now move it into something that's going to experience tr- even two, three times the growth and it's more stable and it, it's more certain than the stock market. So what's next for, for us uh, here at J Par Vantage as well uh, and across the four locations is that we're, we're acquiring commercial real estate assets, uh, multi, multi-tenant retail and office um, commercial real estate that we're going to be bringing to our family and friends um, that they can invest in passively. Um, and that, that's a huge passion uh, for me to give this opportunity um, to my clo- close family and friends and acquaintances and obviously other people that I have not yet met. Um, and where that, where that passion of mine started was um, in 2015, um, I had already left uh, the oil and company, the oil and gas company that I was working for. And I had one of my very dear f- close friends call me on the phone one day and he said, he said, Jeremy, I've been seeing your success in real estate. Um, I want you to be my mentor. That's and awesome. um, and it just that's got to be a surreal moment. Yeah, I was like, wow. So I, I've achieved success, but it, it's not about me. It is about me giving back to my family, my friends, uh, and saying, hey, this is how you can acquire wealth in real estate, and this is how you can grow your grow your real estate portfolio. Um, and so, yeah, we partnered on the first deal. We crushed it on the first deal, and it just started growing from then. We we just at first it was just kind of our small community from our church. Um, we had more investors start growing. We started doing more deals and more deals. Um, and it's just, it's, it's so, it's my passion to, to give back um, uh, to my friends and family to um, be a part of this. So, so yeah, at first it, it's been, it's been a um, kind of an exclusive club to be mm-hmm. a part of our syndicate, our real estate syndication. So yes, I, I want to grow that and, uh, you know, keep it close knit. Um, but in addition to that, keep um, keep educating. So this is what the yeah. podcast is about: is educating others on how to to build and grow and, and sustain their wealth. I think that's part of the yeah. the the what's fun about this, yeah. right? Is that yeah. whole education yeah. piece? Because exactly. I think my experience has always been that the more that we educate other people, yeah. we're educating ourselves in that whole entire process. Exactly. So we're growing. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that's that's what's so exciting about this and as our network builds and grows that we're going to be growing too individually and professionally and yep. helping achieve what goals that we're trying yep. to achieve um helping other people achieve those goals and um it, it's been fun especially you know the last couple uh couple years that we've been um associated yep. with each other right, right. We, um, we became partners what about three years ago right. almost now and uh, just this whole journey right. to where we're at today from where it started um, has been a lot of fun and just, it's been challenging. Yeah. I'm sure frustrating because 
Dealing with Tony can be dealing with Tony can be very <laughs> frustrating. Absolutely, but yeah, it's uh, I need a tissue, um, but just for to wipe my eye because this is getting a little emotional. Um, but you know, it, 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 this is everything that we're building for is to do this. This is what we created. This company, That's right. its full intention to do help people build wealth. That's right, and you know, in some cases is get raw with it and that's kind of our whole goal i think as we are discussing hey one let's start doing a podcast yeah. um how we can share information with with each other and other people and bring in guests and so forth and and educate ourselves through this process but keep it as real and you know not the fluff we're not trying to sell anything here we're not trying right. to promote necessarily anything here um, but if we can all work together to help achieve these goals, I, right. um, that's what really fires me up yeah. about this whole thing. And yeah, it's been exciting over these last couple of years, understanding that both of our visions have aligned tremendously on mm -hmm. um, what we want to do and what we want to bring to the market. And it's simply that just we want to we have a desire and a passion to see other people's wealth grow. Yeah, this is this is exciting. Exciting. Fired up. Episode one. Are Episode we in? One. Are we in? The, are we in? The, <laughs> are we at a cut point here? Or? Where's the editor? This is awesome. The editor. No, I'm. I'm excited to be a part of this, and um, it's going to be a, a good journey, fun journey, and we'll see where it takes us. Awesome. That's a wrap for episode one of Building Wealth Strategies. Awesome. Great job, Jeremy. Good job, Tony. <laughs>